and uh, happy New Year's Eve, Eve, everyone. Uh, you're here, Mystic Moon Cafe Radio, as well as video. Um, and we are now streaming live on Facebook from the notifications. <laughs> uh, with me tonight, I've got the wonderful Sonia Jorgensen. Hello. Michael Rand uh, with Silver Moon Medicine, Whispering Shadows. Ooh, I like Whispering Shadows. Yeah, and talk, Jake, I, could, I could talk a little bit about that later on. Okay, all righty. And uh, the, the... Hey, I'm here. I turned yep, on. Yep. I turned it on. Hi, folks. <laughs> um, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna just have a lot of fun tonight. Um, talk about some stones and and how to use them for healing and uh, protection, probably, and whatever else comes along the way. It's been a day of of all the days we've ever had. It's one of them. Um, so here we go. Ah, the awkward silence. What, 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 what? I mean, I was multitasking here. I got to get the chat going and everything. And I, I am male. I can do well. one thing at a time. <laughs> we we all roll, know this. I got this topic. And I wanna... <laughs> I'm just like, I have to get the chat going. I got to get the listeners all engaged. Blah, 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 blah. Just wait, huh? What? Well, huh? well we, huh? could, we could definitely talk about the, the moon last night and how powerful it was to kick everybody around mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So if many of you guys out there are feeling what we uh, four have been feeling, you know, uh, we're all in the same little tiny ship together. So yes, we are. Uh, this moon, this moon was uh, a big moon to finish off the new year um, in different time frames. It's the wolf moon, according to Wiccan uh, books and according to other things I want to say it's like the buffalo moon or there's all kinds of different moons out for this time of the year so cold moon cold moon the snow mm -hmm. moon maybe yeah <laughs> the I know freaking moon, ice this storm moon, moon. This moon. <laughs> yeah it came with That's a really a high moon. vibration this year to kind of really shake us all up and um you know for those of us that are still asleep and not yet quite spiritually or mentally awake it's it's taking and bringing those shadows right up front so you can take a good look at them this, and decide, do you want this? Is it going to stick with you for 2021 or are you going to get rid of it and let it go? So mm -hmm. I know it gave me a number. <laughs> well, then let's let's get mm -hmm. into that. Um, because when it comes to all these moons, like we were talking earlier, I know my moon is in Taurus, but this is our, these are all new moons to me. So let, <laughs> let's, let's talk about the extra karmic debt. I don't even know if I'm using that correctly, so don't send the hate mail. But if you do, you can send it to Mystic Moon. Oh, a puppy's cute. You can send it to Mystic Moon Cafe at Gmail, and I'll just send a spam filter for Jake. It will be cool. So oh, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about let's talk about this heavy karmic debt. I we like I said I don't know if I'm doing that right. What 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 do these moons mean for this year and especially as we exit the notoriously horrible 2020? That's for um, you, my guy. Oh, I was like, is that for me? I'll throw it to you. I'll throw <laughs> okay. it. Okay, woo, I got it. All right. I'll call so, everyone. <laughs> just wait, from, wait, duck, duck. From, you know, big box, no whammy. Stop, Micah. <laughs> I don't know. I guess just from my perspective, you know, this this year has been an uh, um, an incredible year, really. I mean, many of us were looking for things that we couldn't find, like how to balance work and family and, you know, kids and all these different kinds of things. And this, you know, COVID kind of shook everything up and really changed our norm. And because goal and if you're somebody that's into star children and ascension and that kind of stuff, that this is the age of Aquarius. We are awakening to a new, a new way of thinking, a very feminine energy way of thinking. And so it's been very important for us to have something. It, it was going to take something catastrophic, right? to make us all, every one of us in the world be affected at the same time. To look at all the things that the Pisces age has created for us in our current society. 
And so this last moon came has come along to make sure its goal was to, for those that are struggling with waking up and wanting to get rid of that, you know, the dark things or, you know, like, who the hell are you? Excuse my language. Who the heck are you, you know? And, you know, who do you want to be? And where do you see yourself? Well, if you find yourself without a job, without money, and living in our current society, you got to figure out where you really fit in and how you want to be. And that's what this year is really kind of, bam, shined a, a bright light on our darkest spots of ourselves. So... I know for myself, I've really done a lot of soul searching, like what's really important to me? Quality, quantity, which do I want? You know, do I want to live to be 88 and not be healthy or do I want to live to, you know, who knows, 70 and be as healthy as possible? I mean, so those have just been things I think all of us across the world have been thinking about. Definitely. And that's what our vibrational shift is all about. So Sonia. What you got yeah. on the subject? Um, ditto. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. I think I, I think the hard part for you know um, looking. I'm not gonna say hindsight is 2020. I am so sorry that just came into my head, and I'm like, nope, don't do it. Um, <laughs> back, Dad um, joke. Past Dad year joke. Um, in hindsight, <laughs> um, you really get a chance to see how you know this a global event has really shaken us up and created an environment where we had to step back and look at what our priorities were mm -hmm. and what mattered, and you realize that. that all those things that we did in our lives as distractions, when those are taken away, um, what is it we actually miss in our mm -hmm. life? What is it that is actually absent in this event? And, and finding out that the more quality time you spend at home with your family, um, you know, the, those moments that, you know, we get caught up in our work and, and we drive to work and we drive home and we're never, you know, we, we, Go, what is, what is it you, you drive to a job to make the money to buy the home you're never in because you got to go to the job to make the money to buy, <laughs> to pay for the home, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's, that's, you know, that's kind of become the American dream, right? And mm -hmm. so then what happens is when you're suddenly without that um, pattern, that pattern gets shaken and now um, you have to reassess, you know, what is that? What does that look like? What does it look like? How do we frame a being a successful adult? How do we define that now in society? And do we actually really care what anybody else thinks about it? And, you know, you finally get to spend time with your family and time with the people that are important and you're forced to not um, go out and, and do things that are um, superficial distractions, but at the same time, you're also restricted from the things that actually gave you fulfillment and um, aligned with your hopes and dreams. And so um, we've been limited in our access to art and we've been limited, you know, theater or music or, you know, going and doing these things maybe that really did fill our soul, we no longer have access to, but it's giving us an opportunity to see, is it really important? And which of these things actually matters um, to us so that we value it better. I mean, you can't have the light without the dark in that respect, that you respect the light more because of those moments of dark. And so you have an opportunity to really see, oh my gosh, actually a really, it wasn't just a, you know, a fly by night thing. I took it for granted. And now I realize just how important this thing really is to me. And so now when it is available to me again, it will be a priority in my life, kind of a, you know, taking stock, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a crazy year. And um, I honestly, I mean, my hope going into the next year is that going into Aquarius is our moment to really realize um, how important connectedness is, that being disconnected from each other physically. I mean, we've been able to make some amazing advances in technology. And those of us that hadn't been, you know, getting on the bandwagon with things like Zoom and, and such to interact, you know, it's, it's been kind of you know, we've, we've had to rely on it now to interact with family and, you know, not that, it, you know, I mean, you still miss the human connection, but it, it, it gives us that opportunity to see people um, mm -hmm. that you don't normally get to see. And so there's been some good that's come out of that in that, you know, how we use our technology. But um, when we finally get to come back together, um, I'm really hoping that this really has created an environment for us to um, focus on unity 
and that unity is so important that there's been so much division and so much separation that um, that when we come back together, we can uh, really unify it would be amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm really hoping that we um, get the opportunity to 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 help those less fortunate than us now, you know, that we look at the less fortunate and figure out how to make it better instead of just casting things away like people and personalities and, you know, our jails and all that kind of stuff. I really hope we really do take a good introspective look as how to habilitate a human and not just cast them away like like trash. So, I mean, I really that's what I'm praying for. <laughs> and mental health care. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the mental health that has been impacted by this uh, is, you know, putting a huge light on just how important it is that we take care of, you know, our own mental health, but the mental health of each other and be um, supportive. It's just yeah. it's crazy. And start teaching it in our schools, you know, start teaching kids. I think some of the most amazing things I've ever seen is kids meditating. There was some yeah. thing on Facebook, you know, of kids, what if they taught meditation in school? Wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, I think it would be great. We, it would change the whole culture of the way school is. So, you know, and they need to do, kids need to do some of this kind of computer stuff for a healthy reason, to prepare them for a job for the future, mm. and, you know, not all gaming, and trust me, I'm a big gamer, but, um, you know, <laughs> we got to have balance. Balance, yeah, I think, you know, hey, hey it's Libras, you know, <laughs> we, just right. we, gotta, we gotta come back to the balance, you know, technology can be a beautiful connector, but it can also be a divider, and it's just in how we use the tool, I mean, and there's so many things out there, again, that we use this distraction that we need to maybe remove from our lives, but other things that have been taken away that we need to prioritize, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just sort of finding that balance between connectedness. Mm -hmm. So, on the subject of connectedness and balance, Micah, you are known for your um, work using the stones and crystals to work out emotional imbalances. Mm -hmm. So since we're on the subject of that, how can people use those tools in their everyday life um, to create a harmonious space? Because I will say being cooped up with mother half now for like nine months, it's actually going okay. <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> but <laughs> there are plenty of people that uh, let's just say have found out they're not necessarily as compatible as they thought. Right. It's been a much, though. much more challenging kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And I mean, my thing is about crystals and, and stones and I've loved them for, for a very, very long time. And I had a great awakening with them. Um, but I, what I love about them is that it doesn't matter what you practice like it doesn't matter whether you're a Wiccan Christian uh it doesn't matter what you do because stones are about healing your spiritual self and your inside right it's about helping you learn how to control what's going on within this self because if you can't learn to control this whole thing yourself then you're not going to relate very well in the world um so I've always loved teaching about stones from the very beginning before you even begin anything else. It's a great way to begin your opening. It's socially acceptable. More times or not, your friends might be like, oh, well, you've got that great little stone sitting by your desk, you know, but nobody's going to think, ooh, that's like some kind of big major mojo magic, you know what I mean? So that's, that's the part that I like about stones. They're very subtle. And, and to be honest, they're very multi-layered. You know, you're going to read lots of books and you're going to read lots of different things and people's perspectives. And you have to remember it's from that person's perspective. And um, so when, it, when we think about perspectives, just like look at all of us right now, us four right here, each one of us to me is a different vibrational pattern we each emit a different little frequency from ourselves. And when that frequency is in tune, you know, it's a good thing. Things work well for the body. Things work good for the emotions and the emotional horror line that arounds us. And so it's very important that we, you know, try to make sure to take care of all that within ourselves. Am I answering your question? <laughs> I was like, I can go for <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Exploratory, because you're, you're opening up conversation points here. But let me let me toss to Sonia. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what, what, how do you say use your stones and Micah, we'll come back to this. Cause we'll talk, I want to no elaborate worries. more about the different stones and everything. Mm -hmm. but Sonia, when it comes to crystals and stones and finding harmony, balance, getting in sync, how do you apply that for our listeners in your daily life? So uh, in my daily life, I actually have stones on my desk. <laughs> you know, I have, um, I have some selenite actually near the door of my office. Um, and I, what do I have? Um, I might be tiger's eye by the window. So in, a, in an effect, moving the energy when it cleansing it as it comes through and then it's the um having the tiger's eye by the window to really absorb any negativity and then having the sun um, dissipate that and so it's really kind of almost like a draw to make sure that the energy continues to cycle and move and pull through so that nothing becomes stagnant and that um you know anything that's uh lingering uh, moves along. We don't want any, any stagnation in energy. I do, you know, in my job, there is a lot of stress and there's a lot, um, there can be negativity. There's drama, um, as everybody experiences in the workplace and drama. Um, so, you know, having, having those, I've noticed that, you know, when people come in and sit down in my office, there's almost this relaxation that occurs, um, where people just sort of sit and they, they settle a little bit. And then kind of like what Michael was saying, you know, each of us has our own vibration too. I think part of that too is also cleansing myself and keeping my energy balanced and staying grounded and staying clean um, from a, you know, kind of a, a auric perspective in that when people come in and inter interact with my energy, um, it helps them chill, you know, and that it kind of brings them down and they relax a little bit and time, time slows slightly for them so that um, they, they feel they can have that moment and that time and my attention. Um, and that it's not rushed or hurried or strained, even though everybody's so busy. Um, and, you know, having those, those crystals just in my day-to-day -day life, I mean, I, you know, kind of helping keep that room clear as, as the drama moves through it throughout the day. Um, I'm in a leadership role, if that helps explain that a little bit. So, um, and then, you know, I, I'm going to carry crystals in my pocket all the time, depending on what I need for that day. If I'm a little off, I find the one that helps bring me back to balance. And that's what goes in the pocket. When I'm doing energy healing, I actually have um, an amulet that's a combination of amethyst, tiger's eye, copper, um, and silver. And it, um, I wear that when I do my healing to um, a sort of a, a protective grounding connecting um, item for me while I'm doing my healing work. Um, and then when I am working with people um, similar to kind of what Mike is describing, if, if there's a shift or something's off or closed off or just not maybe responding like it should in the, you know, in the chakra um, area, I use the, the corresponding crystal or stone and that and, and finding the corresponding crystal or stone. A lot of people do it by color. I feel it by, by, by vibration. So I can feel when I hold a stone or a crystal, I can feel its vibration and I look for um, alignment and I, and I feel the resonance. So um, vibrational resonance, you know, if you've ever done like tuning forks or you've ever been in music, you can feel that um, where the wavelengths almost align. And so there's this moment where if somebody's energy um, is off in an area or one of their chakras, major chakras are just kind of shut down or closed, um, I find the stone that has that vibrational resonance that I want to bring them to, if that makes sense, to kind of raise or lower the vibration to, to realign it. Um, and, and then we work, and then I work with energy to bring it into resonance with that stone. So, um, and that kind of helps to get it, you know, it's like a remembering like, oh yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is where I'm supposed to be. I get it now. Gotcha. So, um, I, you know, I use crystals and stones. Um, those are my, my primary ways I use them, but yeah, it kind of, um, I pick the thing for the moment that I need, if that makes sense. And I know that's probably super vague, but Absolutely. it's, you know, it's really going to be individual for everybody, what they resonate with and what works. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask that question as being someone that doesn't, you know, I'm just regular ghost hunter. I'm just like, how do you know which stone which crystal oh, wow. is going to be the one i mean it, i when i was reading this like i did write an article on like paranormal protection and stones mm -hmm. but it wasn't necessarily you know it's not a healing thing it's not it's it's very much you know let me put up my blast shield and keep the heebie-jeebies yeah. away and all the bad stuff it's not our attachment type stuff mm -hmm. so for our rookie listeners out there when it comes to finding the stones or the crystals 
is there a way you can find one that's going to work for what you need in the moment? Because I know you talked about the resonance and all that stuff. Is it a feeling? What is it? Yeah. I mean, I guess in, in um, I don't know, either Wendy or, or Micah might have, you know, some feedback too, but when you, everybody's sensitivity level is different. So if you're brand new to it, you may not feel it as strongly as I do. I had to learn to listen, if that makes sense, to the right thing. Like I could hear the vibration, but I didn't, my brain didn't recognize it. My body didn't recognize that sensation as my connecting to the stone. It took time for my, cause it's quieter. It's a quieter energy. Um, and so I had to um, allow it and recognize it so that I could notice it better. And then it became stronger. It's like a muscle you have to work. So at first you, you may pick up and you're like, this is just a bucket of rocks. This lady's nuts. I don't know what the heck she's talking about. You know, like, I don't know what any of this is. Yeah. It's like, it's just a bag of rocks. What do you mean? So, and, and I, I totally started there too. I was like, I don't understand what they're talking about with this vibration. But then what I did was I actually would sit with them and I would close my eyes. My eyes were tricking me. And so I would close my eyes and I would just sit and I would start holding stones, just picking them up and putting them down, different ones, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down and all different kinds until I started to notice the subtle differences between each of them. And then the game I would play with myself was I would start lining them up by vibration from low to high. And I would start doing that and then come to find out the colors of those stones and the properties of those stones started aligning with chakras from low to high. So, you know, I had this, this, the, like this petrified wood and this, um, you know, tiger's eye. And then I had this Apache tear and then I had this, uh, you know, I just, all these kind of, those were all sort of hanging out together. And then I noticed I had this amethyst and I had this quartz and I had you know and I, those were all starting to hang out together so I'm starting to notice some division between a more dense lower lower not being negative but just a denser lower slower vibration versus a higher more amplified bigger vibration and I started noticing myself doing that as I spent more time with them um, if that kind of makes sense so in in picking the stone that you need in the moment Honestly, a lot of times it's just, try, you know, it's going with your first choice and just trusting your gut and letting your subconscious mm -hmm. guide you just reach in and grab a stone and that's the one, you mm -hmm. know, you may not understand why or no, but um, just trust and believe there's a part of you that does know and just reach in and grab one and that's it. That's the mm -hmm. stone. Don't second guess it or put a lot of effort into, oh my God, I don't know. Is that, uh, you know, just that's mm -hmm. the stone. Go with it, you know? So, that's yeah. And so for you, Micah, then is it a similar process for you or has it changed over time? Because you're what I mean, being so well versed in crystals and stones, has it always been the same process for you or did, how did it evolve over time? So it wasn't the same process. I mean, like from the beginning, like what Sonia was saying is that you kind of you kind of, you don't really feel anything at first because you're not, you haven't learned how to resonate that way. Your, your body energy is not been pro you haven't programmed it to, to want to reach out. You, you've got to let that kind of flow out. And the other thing you got to do is you really have to build your intuition. Um, and so that is one of the biggest keys of, you know, using stones and crystals is if you want to use them farther beyond just having a pretty little bobble by your table or on your neck or whatever, you, you want to be able to learn how to resonate with it. And you have, I mean, for me, um, I, how I started was, is that I uh, had a daughter, developmentally disabled daughter who used to pick up the most very unattractive agates and be like, mommy, look at this. Can't you feel how beautiful it is? And, you know, I was like, ah, it's just a stone. Put it in that little vase over there, honey. <laughs> and, you know, um, as I moved through life, I met somebody in the, in the early, early eighties. And she said, wow, you don't even know what your abilities are. And I was, you know, I was totally blind. This I, my third eye was sound asleep. And she had said to me, you know, you need to take this piece of amethyst and go take yourself a bath with some sea salt in there and put it under your tongue and sit and meditate with it. And that night, your dreams will tell you what you need to work on. So, you know, it took me a little bit to really do it because I was scared to think what the heck could really happen, right? You know, your mind wanders or runs when you don't know it. And it's a little fearful in some ways. You're going to choke on the amethyst and drown in a saltwater bath. 
There you go. <laughs> when this lady does That's exactly what I'm talking about. And they're about. done that, yeah. <laughs> Every Friday. So I, I finally yeah. did do it. And, and, uh, and that night I had a, a very disturbing dream. And I mean, I don't really want to go into the, the dream too much, but it was a pretty disturbing dream. But in the end of that dream, I realized it was a message to myself about how much pain and suffering I had gone through as a child and how it was affecting my current status as a human right now, you know? So that is what woke me up. Now, I didn't stay awake for a whole long period of time. I kind of went back to sleep for a little bit because life, kids, uh, bad marriages and all that kind of stuff come along. And then again, when it seems when you're at your night, your uh, dark night of your soul, your night of your dark soul. I can't even think of what the name of it is. The dark right night now. of the soul, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> when you finally hit that bottom is when you start to think, you know, what is it? What, what am I supposed to be doing? Where was I supposed to be going? And again, you know, my daughter said, mommy, look at this great little rock, you know? Oh, mm -hmm. and that was the first time I felt the stones. I mean, I literally felt them resonate in my hand like a, a hot energy for me it was like a hot transfer of energy and and for everybody else it's kind of different like um I've seen people be able to move stones in their hands and not move their hands and that stone is moving that was the most amazing thing I had ever seen and it's just connecting the other thing I would do is like so when I really got into it I would start charging the stones and I'd have people close their eyes and hold their hand over it and tell me where that rose quartz heart is stop where you feel it and then when they when they you know and they'd stop over top of it and so then them spark in them so <clears throat> that's kind of how I got started and I just you know I really started I felt so drawn to it I I mean on my table at Silver Moon Medicine when I'm vending I sell about 88 different types of stones um I really do kind of focus on people's emotional wellness. To me, that's the most important thing that we have the biggest issue with as humans on the planet mm -hmm. and um, that stop us from our, you know, kind of ascending. But um, so, but you could come to my table and you could just pick up any stone you feel drawn to and hold it for a little bit. And if you pass that stone to me, your spirit will talk to me and it will tell me why you picked that stone and what you're working on. Guaranteed. I mean, I rarely am not right. I just have this, I've over the years continued to just build that ability to be able to do it. And so I do that a lot of times at, um, at shows and stuff like that. Cool. It's kind of how I got started. You know, so let's, We'll we'll come back to the I guess uh, feeling the energy pop thing. Uh, let's I don't know when no big bucks no whammies. Um, well, <laughs> we'll bet, but Wendy, we haven't heard about this. What are you doing with crystals and stones? Because it's always interesting. Like I I don't know necessarily your own personal practice. I don't have a lot right now. Um, but say uh, I have a, a beautiful moonstone ring actually um uh when i'm doing things under the moon or you know just uh ritual type things i i wear that for uh support a little more power what have you um they just like you guys were saying it, it just spoke to me um i love moonstone i love the i love onyx and a whole bunch of the others you know and they just I, I don't even know that I feel the vibration, but I feel the, the connection. Um, so that, that's about it. I mean, I don't know that I have any actual practices with them. Beyond a little boost every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to tell you about my personal experience with stones. Because... Would you please? Okay. Um, okay. So I know you guys, it, it, and most listeners know I don't really talk about this stuff. I'm usually the hardcore techie ghost hunter. Okay, but he's but, a non-believer most of the time. But, but mm -hmm. I will say, <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are some stones that actually I am attracted to. That every time, I always pick them out. 
and they are, and you'll probably be very familiar with them, Onyx, Obsidian, Tiger's Eye, and I think it's called Magnetite. Mm -hmm. And every time, so what's interesting about this one is when you talked about the resonating. So it, usually when I go ghost hunting and stuff, like I'm all about the insurance policy because you don't really know what's going to work or not, right? Yeah. I always go and I have a bracelet made of Onyx, Obsidian, and Tiger's Eye. And I wear is it. it. Yeah. Can I ask, is it yellow tiger's eye, blue tiger's eye, red tiger's eye? It's what kind of a bronzy. Is it? It's kind of a bronzy color. Kind so of a, probably a yellow tiger's eye. Yeah, I, I could probably, like, I'd have to it's, it's it. It's kind of like a goldish color when yeah. you say, when I say yellow, it's yeah, not it's, really. It, it's kind of like my dog <laughs> Wally is a fawn color, that kind of rusty brown, uh, okay. but shiny. And it's that color mixed okay. in. Um, and I always, whenever it comes to stones or something like that, I always get attracted, which makes me think, right, if we're going on the Libra tip and you need some kind of balance, I'm figuring it's probably a heavy grounding stone. But what's interesting, and this is when you talked about resonating, when I would pick them up or touch, touch them, because I do runes and they are obsidian. They're carved oh, wow. in, right in stone, uh, obsidian stones. Like I said, that's like my number one stone obsidian go figure awesome. but when i pick them up like let's just take tiger's eye no matter how big it is it feels light as a feather um whenever i do obsidian uh it's very heavy like you know it's like you pick up even it's a little bit it feels like it's being pulled down but when it comes to the onyx side of the house and the magnetite they're both kind of middle of the road but i kind of feel a, like a little charge and i do feel like I get a little static crackle awesome. with that. I guess that's the best way to say it. And so those are my stones. That's what I know. I haven't looked <laughs> into it anymore. Start. Right, that's sure. start that way. <laughs> <laughs> Great start. But, but the thing is, oh. when I pick the runes, when I pick the runes, though, the thing that you were talking about, you go over and that's, I lay out the runes and stuff. And as I'm going over, I get, bam. My finger feels like, you know, Graviton, the villain, just grab my finger and say, I'm going to throw like 200 Gs on that and bam. And down and you, the stone it goes. And you said those are made of on it uh, are made of obsidian. Yes, they are. So obsidian is a stone that is, as you said, very grounding. But obsidian also has the ability to kind of move your energy back and forth. Mm. So meaning, when I say move your energy, make your resonating sound can go from you know maybe. Uh, 350 megahertz to like, you know, 526 megahertz. So it mm -hmm. allows you some ability to be able to touch the different frequencies of people that you're with. That's oh. one thing it does. Um, onyx is a really great stone that helps you connect with people beyond the veil. So okay. it can help you connect with spirit guides. Um, it, the interesting thing about the stones that you talk about, yes, all three of them, the, the all the black stones are all super grounding stones, right? They all kind of help you stay within your, that you say that you're a little bit skeptical. Well, that's part of that whole thing to keep you in that skeptical kind of want to weigh it out perspective. But then when you throw a little bit of yellow tiger's eye into that, now tiger's eye works with your uh, will chakra, which is your chakra that is kind of gives us our attitude, our personality, our, uh, our, our need to want to connect things. You know, you think of tiger's eye like tigers, roar, lions, you know, that mm -hmm. it kind of gives you that ability to have a little more um outgoingness and not so weighted down does that make sense yeah so it's like saying hi world i'm here it's, really great. Huh? <laughs> it's like saying hi world i'm here mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not it, i mean it's not considering kind of how you've talked and the things you've talked about from just my short time talking with you it does make a lot of sense that those would be the stones that you would resonate with because of the things you like to do the people you probably hang around, the energies you probably attract that maybe you don't know you're even attracting those energies because you're set the ground. Um, so. Thank you for that. You're welcome.
So if you were using like red tiger's eye, now red tiger's eye, in my opinion, is about being a showstopper. It kind of, it works with your uh, first chakra, which is your root chakra, which is your security chakra. So when someone feels secure, they can be much more boisterous or kind of outgoing if they have the, if they have like a red shot, uh, a red tiger's eye on. Okay. Blue tiger's eye more focuses on you being able to say what you feel uh, and I be able to project that out in a, in a stronger manner, or it can also help you keep your mouth shut. Like if you're somebody that too much <laughs> bad thing, sometimes you need to keep it shut. Yeah. <laughs> looks like we lost somebody. Yeah, I we're scared her off. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get her back. We'll mm -hmm. get her back. It was that dread uh, preacher dude from the Poltergeist movies going after little Carol Ann. He got oh, her. No. He's She's trying. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm gonna look into. I'm gonna look into those different yeah. tigers eye because that brings me up something I've been okay. meaning to work on. So I will. I will. Um... Oh, here she comes back. So um, let's, I wanted to talk about when it comes to charging, because you guys talked about that, charging um, the stones. And I recently, there's, there's a little subgroup within a ghost, which is the ghost hunting I'm a member of. And we've been looking more into, I hate to say a cult, but that's what we called it stuff. And it was all about charging your stones um, overnight over a full moon. So is this a, a practice you have to do routinely to keep them in power? Cause I don't know anything about this stuff. I just put my stones in, you know, in my car overnight because it faced the full moon and I didn't want the critters to take them. Uh, <laughs> I live in the country. I live in the country. People I have to worry about it. I do have to worry about it. So what's, is there a process of getting in alignment with your stones, personalizing them, charging them that, uh, our listeners would need to know about? Absolutely. Do you want to go first? I would die to finish. Sonia? Uh, me? Yeah, 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 sure. So, I mean, you know, kind of the disclaimer, I think everybody would say, you know, that, that my friend Wendy might also share is the disclaimer is this is my way. That does not make it the right way or the only way. So mm -hmm. this is how I do this. So um, with that disclaimer, <laughs> um, so everybody will find, again, it's all about how you resonate and about your intention. So if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, toss it. So my um, I, whenever I buy something new from a store, it's going to carry the energy of its travels to that moment. So um, when I get it home, um, obviously that stone spoke to me for some reason. And so we have some sort of a connection. There's some sort of a resonance between myself and the stone, either a need or, or an alignment. So um, it's not that it's completely foreign, uh, but there's going to be other gunk. Um, and so I bring it home. Um, I typically will wash it. Um, first and then um, in ritual so I'll set up my altar and I'll call my quarters and I'll cast my circle and do the whole Wiccan shebang and then um, I will set my intent into that stone in ritual um, after doing a cleansing with the four elements and so that involves um, you know using salt incense um, uh, I have moon water um, you know, so I, I kind of run it through each of these things and it depends on the quality of the stones. So you have to kind of be careful. There are some stones that are too soft, but you don't want to rub salt on them. There's other stones that you may not want to immerse in water. So you kind of have to be careful about that. Sometimes it's just a sprinkle. Um, but I, I kind of um, run it through all four of them as part of the cleansing. And um, then I actually will just hold it until I feel it vibrate with my energy, if that makes sense, where we have an alignment. So sort of like what you're talking about when you hold those stones, you can feel that a little electrical charge. I will feel it start to actually vibrate in my hand and it will align with my vibration. And because I'm a musical person, everything that I do has a tone. I hear everything with a tone, that's vibration to me. So um, uh, I will hear the tone. Um, and so that's when I know that we're hitting that resonance frequency. Um, so we, uh, we will connect in that way. And I set my intent. Um, and so that's personal as well. It's like, what is your intent for that stone? What, what are you asking from it? What are you returning to it? Um, how are you creating the symbiotic relationship with this thing that is now going to help aid you in whatever work you're using it for? In my case, it's in helping others to heal. So I'm setting an intent in its use. Um, 
if I am uh, cleansing, blessing, and intending a stone that is meant for someone else, that's also part of that activity as well. It might be that I'm going to gift this stone. It's for someone else. And so um, I might change things up a little bit because it's not about me and my energy. It's about that other person and their energy. Um, and then it gets into the rotation for my um, healing practice. Now, when I use it in healing practice, it's going to pick up and absorb the energy of the other person that I'm working with. And so I cleanse my stones frequently between clients. Um, now, you may not need to do that. If those stones are for personal use, um, you know, and again, it's all on feel. You may um, run them back through that ritual activity again um, every few months if you're feeling like, gosh, I haven't picked it up in a while or um, I haven't, it's collecting dust, or, <laughs> you know, you might run it back through and reset your intention. Uh, if it's feeling like it's losing its, its luster a little bit. Um, I keep my stones in a black bag in between use. So um, for me, that kind of helps to keep that contained, um, to, to hold that energy in it, um, and that intent in it uh, a little bit longer. But I'll recharge them, um, between, I'll cleanse them between every client for sure. And then I will recharge them with my intent um, quarterly. And I use the full moon. So they, they definitely, after I've gone through the ritual activity, they get set out. <laughs> my husband knows when it's happening because of my vast collection. Every windowsill in my bedroom on a full moon has something like I cover <laughs> the windowsills. It's from one side to the other all the way across the room. Every windowsill has a stone in it. So <laughs> it's, it's wall to wall. Um, everybody gets out and gets a moon bath um, and uh, then they all go into the black bag. So that's, that's typically my, um, my setup. And then for you, Micah. Well, mine's, mine's a little different. Um, and like, and like you said, it really depends on how you practice and what you believe is practice for you. What is your ritual that invokes the magic within yourself, right? So for me, um, I, I don't, I don't ever put any boundaries on stones like where, so to me, their energy can reach out wherever it needs to reach out. It doesn't have, you can't, it, for me, I can't contain it. I can, I can use it and operate with it, but I won't, I don't, I won't ever contain a stone. And, and kind of what I do when I first get a stone or teach people to use stones, I you get, you, you figure out which one you feel fits and you take it and more times than not when you start reading the books about them you'll find out there's one little thing that you didn't know about yourself that was uh might just shine really bright mm -hmm. and then uh i like to teach people to um first thing like she said you do some kind of cleansing to cleanse it whether that is salt water earth air um i'm really elemental when it comes to stones earth stones are from mother nature she's from the earth She's Gaia's gifts to us. And so we want to resonate. And I always ask people like, what, what might be what your sign is that you, like I'm an air sign, I'm a double Gemini. So I'm super, super air. Um, and, and not everybody needs to use the moon to charge their, their crystals. They can use the sun. Some people are sun people. Some people are water people where you need to take it and put it in a river or lay it on a beach. So it, to me, I teach from that perspective. Um, on how to on how to kind of cleanse your crystals. And the other thing you can do is simply put them in a glass of water. Yes, you do have to be careful. Some cannot go in water, like never put an opal in salt water. Your opal will disappear. Don't put any of your metal stones like galena or uh, your magnetite should probably not go in water because it's a magnetic type of stone. It would cause it to oxidize. Yes. Remember, it's made out of earth. And so, I mean, you could put it in a cup of water. I always tell people, stick it in your window, watch the bubbles. And when it stops bubbling, you know, then you can take it out and then I'll lay them out and let them dry, whether that be sun, sand, salt, whatever it is. So that's my kind of way of cleansing. Um, then, of course, we want to, you got to, after you cleanse it, you want to program it. You want to, you want to unlock its gifts. You want it to, you want to tell it what its responsibilities are. It wants to know. And so, and of course, like what Sonia was saying is that you have to, if, if my stone is going to be a working stone, I'm asking it when I'm buying it at the store, 
are you interested in being a working stone? Your, your role with me is going to be, now I don't necessarily have a talk with it like this because people will be like, wow. But you know, think about it while I'm holding the stone, you know, that this is going to be a great, this is going to be a great stone. So like I found this, it's really hard to see, but this is one of the most beautiful pieces of aquamarine you will see. It's from Pakistan. It's one of my current pieces that I bought quite a few of them for because they're about, this stone is about resonating and um, transformation. It's also about helping you make shifts within yourself so you can stay solid or be a little more fragmented if you're too solid of a person. And so to me, this is a stone that's really prevalent right now. And so when I bought them, took them, cleansed them, some of them I want, one of them I decided, oh, you're going to be for me and I'll sleep with them. I'll put them under my pillow at nighttime so they can talk to me through my dreams. I'm a I used to call myself a spirit walker because, you know, there's a little controversy on whether this person, Anglo-Saxon, white girl is going to be somebody that's a shaman, right? So I just, I just thought I would use the name spirit walker because then it kind of covers everything that I feel like I can cover. And I do a lot of work in my dreams. So I put them in you know, in underneath my pillow. That also helps them be intimate. You can put them in any area of your areas, like your, of your home, especially if it's a power spot, like you were talking about putting them on your altar. You can put them there. You can wear them. You can stick them in your brassiere. You can put them in your pocket. You could put them in a medicine bag and pack them around. Like in this medicine bag, I have all the 12 synergy stones that are currently the biggest, highest vibrations that mother nature is kicking out right now. And remember, mother nature is changing, right? She used to vibrate at what, about 7.4 megahertz. And now she's vibrating at something like 14 something. So over the last five to six years, her vibration has changed. They've proven that with the shum shumanic, um, or the the, uh, what do you the call those? Mm -hmm. uh, the resonance, right? The resonance, yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, so you got to figure these are made from heat, sand, water, all kinds of things. And she's going to continue to make new stones and she's going to continue to change the vibration of those stones as she makes them for us to continue healing. It really just depends on, you know, what you want what do you need? What do you feel you need to focus on? Like, where are your shadows? What are your character defects? And what ones, what parts of it do you want to change? And it sounds like you work from the, sh like more of a chakra kind of thing. I, I really don't focus on the physical chakras with the body as much as I focus on your emotional horror lines and your emotional aura that surrounds the body. That's kind of where my forte is and what I, because I believe that the human body can get more resonated if this is a little more resonating in its own self. So it's just from my perspective. It's kind of neat to see how easy it is for two, you know, four different people to have all different kinds of vibrations and how they work with the stones. Yeah, it's unique to every person. I, I have a, a quick kind of funny story. So when I first started opening to the vibration of stones and I could, you know, start to feel them and hear them, I, I, uh, I caution you, <laughs> I walked into a store that had all the little plastic bins of all the different kinds of stones with all the little names above them, you know, and I'm starting to learn what each of them is and their properties. And, you know, I'd heard that we'll pick it up and, and talk to it and, and see how it feels and see if it, you know, wants to come home with you, right? So that was like, all right, well, I'll just pick up a stone and we'll have a conversation. So I walked up to the bin with the wall of stones and I stood there and I said, okay, who wants to come home with me? And I felt like someone had taken two tuning forks and just stuck them in my temples. My head just started to ring so loud. I got nauseous and I had to like run out of the store and go outside. <laughs> so I've seen that happen that. to people. <laughs> yeah, so don't do that. Um, have a conversation with one at a time. Be my advice. Don't talk <laughs> to the whole wall. It was crazy. I was like, oh my God, I got See, to get out of here. 
I thought Sonia was going to bring up. She said that and she got all the creepers in the store walking up right? to her. Probably. Yeah. Because yeah. I would hubba, ran so fast. Who knows? I'm sure they're watching me run out the door like, okay. She's a little, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So one thing I'm curious about, and it was brought up, I, I had never heard this, the giving and receiving to stones. So I heard about your intent, but it when you said the stone would be receiving, this is like the first time I'd ever heard that. So is it as simple as saying having the stone reply, re, kind of quote reply? I don't know how to say, saying you're asking it to do a task and it has to agree to it? Okay, it's as simple as that. Essentially. <laughs> I mean, I do the same with my pendulums, but all my pendulums are oh. made from stones. And it's kind okay. of that same premise of, you know, although, well, I guess from my experience, although amethyst has a set vibration and properties. So mm-hmm. it's it's a stone with a, a pretty, you know, everybody kind of knows the standards of what it sort of does. However, I see stones as individuals within a subset if that makes sense. So Mm -hmm. not every amethyst is created equal. Mm -hmm. Not every amethyst vibrates exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like in a family unit. So it might be that you have five in front of you and um, only one of them really is, wants to participate in the work that you in particular are doing or feels not necessarily wants to, I guess might be the wrong word, but feels that they are the best for the job if that kind of makes sense that, Mm -hmm. yep, this is my purpose. This, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to help you the best out of the lineup of us um, with that specific task that they sort of have, they align better to certain things. And and that's just been, again, my experience, but um, that it it is sort of a, they pick you just as much as you pick them. Mm -hmm. I agree with that fully. Mm -hmm. Yep. They sure do. Yeah. And then Micah, one thing you were talking about that I thought was really interesting is while you're talking about the crystals and stones, you also brought metals into it. I think you brought up copper. I think it was silver. I could have been wrong. But when would someone want to bring metals into, into like working with crystals and stones? I don't know if I'm saying that correctly because, but. Well, I mean, essentially, Actually, metal is, again, something that's mostly made by Mother Nature, right? So we'd be looking at, I love, I, you can't really see it, but I have a galena is a is my stone right here. It's shiny, okay. it's beautiful, it looks like a big shiny nugget. And uh, the vibration of galena, so it's metal. It's got a metal uh, thing to it. It's also something you don't want to put in your mouth because you can be toxic if you mm-hmm. have it in there for a long period of time definitely not a ring you want to hit anybody with because it wouldn't be very pretty. Maybe you do, but don't. I was going to say. A beautiful stone. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I really became very attracted to Galena. Uh, you didn't see much of it out where you could go out to the shops and see it. You didn't see it. And then probably like around 2012, you really started seeing it. You know, it's kind of interesting to watch what gets mined by these, by our miners and what is actually coming up, you know, from Mother Nature. She's she's kicking things out that it's like, okay, it's time to connect. You know, for me, I'm a star child. I'm somebody who is about star children and helping them connect with their with their cosmic families. And Galena is one of those stones that help open that portal up for you to be able to connect to your cosmic family. Um, it's also somebody that it can help you kind of connect with some of your deep core resonating, what I believe, uh, kind of what your past lifetime traits might be that you brought into this lifetime, what made you who you are now, and how to expand that up. But you would, copper's been one that people have used for centuries, right? Coppers, look at the metals we used in battle. You know, why did somebody wear gold versus wearing silver? You know, why did somebody choose to have bronze bracelets versus having two silver cup, you know, cups? It's just because of whatever was around in that area. Also, it depended on what was valuable, right? What was seen as a very valuable thing, whether it was a ruby set in the middle of your, you know, your warrior chest piece, 
uh, or, you know, was it just something as simple as earrings or, you know, rings and jewelry? So you, you add in those because you feel a connection to those just like you do stones. Um, if you're into books, Scott Cunningham, he's one of the very beginning um, writers about earth magic and a Wicca, and he talks a lot about using different metals, crystals, stones, gems, and metals, and all the different kinds of things that they help change the vibration of your, your own personal self. So the metals can be superconductors too, mm -hmm. um, you know, True. depending on the metal and how they vibrate, some vibrate cooler and some vibrate warmer. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of times people will use metals in conjunction with stones to amplify or conduct or supercharge that stone in a way. Um, I have a stone that's wrapped in copper to help amplify its energy. Um, uh, and, and even with stones like quartz, many people don't know Uh oh. It it uh -oh. really is an amplifier. It's um it's a conductor, and it uh, it's used in watches. It's used in computers. It's used you know we use quartz even in you know the the Muggle world for just scientific purposes. So it's not even mm -hmm. just woo woo stuff. I mean it really is a superconductor, um, which works you know with all kinds of vibrations. Those that we see and those we don't. And so there's many elements out there that are just that um I. It's always funny when somebody freezes. I, I know. I'm, oh, it's like it looks like a scene out of like a horror movie. It's like, did Jason get her? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all of a sudden you guys' faces went, huh? And I went, and we're like, <laughs> I'm like, are you okay? Apparently that vibration has gone way down. Right. <laughs> Super conducted all the way out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yep, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> yeah, actually, she might have just frozen. Otherwise, she's oh, really no, good. Yeah. That she did freeze. <laughs> you were <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that awkward was high crazy. school photo. Like, oh, yeah. we're having <laughs> we're having the Salisbury steak again. Look. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's my grandma's life like photo. How do you like that? That's my passport. So, you know, you were vibrating and then like, I don't know what happened after that. So, <laughs> oh, there she goes again. Uh -huh. uh, so Micah, let me go over uh, and ask a rookie question because um, we've been talking a lot about stones. We've been talking a lot about crystals. Is there a difference between how you work with stones and crystals? Is there what? Is there a difference? Do you use stones for one purpose, crystals for a different one? Is there something unique to crystals that doesn't carry over to stones? Because I don't know these things. And we've been talking, you know, we've just been talking about, you know, they're pretty interchangeable. And so I'm just like, but are they interchangeable? Well, they're, um, gosh, I mean, I guess when it comes to crystals, it's really knowing the world of crystals, all, especially like clear quartz crystals you'll find if you really get deep into crystals there's lots of different names for them you know there's recorders there are ones that record energy and histories oh, okay. for yourself you'll find there's double termed ones which means they're pointy on one end and maybe pointy on the other end so those are double term when they're a double term crystal means the energy is flowing both directions of that crystal Right. And so it just means that you're getting energy coming in and you have energy going out through your earth, through your earth star chakras. So um, the, it, to me, it's not a difference in them. I mean, they all have their own purpose, but they all vibrate at a different frequency for me. So like if I was to have red jasper, tiger's eye, turquoise, those to me are what I call, they're more like the old world stones, rhodonite, rhodochrosite. All those stones are, I call old world because we had them, you know, they were pretty prevalent and you could find maybe lots of those back in the seventies and eighties. And nowadays to find real true court, uh, real true turquoise is very, very hard because we've over, you know, we've overmined it. But 
I always tell people that, so for those stones, to me, I call those stones because they have this vibration in my head that is this, blah, 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 you know, a lower tone. And then for me, like if I have something like um, some of the higher vibrational stones would be uh, lipidolite, the beautiful purple stone that helps you with your personality balances. And uh, it has a higher, it's more like, ee, and then you get some of the even higher stones like the current ones, azulatite, heterite. Uh, those are like, when you hear them, they're like, ee, kind of sounds. So that's kind of, that's for me, it's really what is in the stone itself and how it resonates with you. It doesn't have a, a set difference per se. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm glad you clarified for me because I was like, I, uh... but there, but really, if you got into uh, crystals, um, I forget all the different names. I mean, some are like record keepers, and some are um, some are celestial, and some are just regular crystals. You got to be careful because some of them are glass that people make and try uh, to sell. Got some it. of them are really shiny plastic that it's hard to tell because they've fired them so high. Uh, the ones like aqua aura, I mean, we could talk about stones that are man-made that are currently, you could find in your shops. You know, you've got aqua aura that's been around since the 70s. It's this beautiful, shiny blue stone. But that stone is really a quartz crystal that they've fired in something like a titanium or a uranium or something to give it that sheen. So there are stones that are man-made stones that aren't really the color that you think they are. Okay. But do they still have some kind of properties you can work with or since as Matt, you know, they having do. people, okay, they do. Okay. I wasn't sure they if the do. manipulation would have, you know, canceled it out or something. No, no, uh, because aqua aura has been around for a very long time. It's a very beautiful stone. It's kind of like a shiny, bright blue stone. And it usually is pretty little cylinder, kind of looking like crystal. Um, but, you know, it, it was part of the new age of enlightenment when that came out. You know, it was a, a new cool bobble. And so it kind of stuck. And people continued to use it and amplify it. And I, like I said, we if we're programming a stone, why wouldn't we be able to still program those also, especially if they're authentic? Now, no, if you get a piece of plastic, it is not going to resonate that same vibration, you know, of a plastic crystal, you know, that it's going to have a different feel to it. Like, so for me, I get my feelings come from when I touch them close to my teeth. I can feel them. And a lot of my feelings, well, now it can come from my hands a little bit better, but originally it's more from like my facial area. I can feel them and smell them and taste them in my mouth before, while I'm holding them, before I'll necessarily feel them in my hands. So because I bring energy in a different way than other people bring in energy. So it just depends on how you transmute energy as the human being that you are, in my opinion. So let me defer. Hi, Sonia. Let oh, me defer hi, over. <laughs> defer over <laughs> to Wendy because I've been flapping my gums a lot, and I haven't let my co-host talk. Well, I'm all right. Um, oh. <laughs> but, but I did have a question for uh, for Micah uh, in your in your little pouch of the the highest resonating uh stones and and crystals what mm -hmm. which ones are they so they look like this it's kind of really hard to see this is a selenite wand it has all 12 of the highest vibrational stones currently since about 2012 now i'll try to name them all off and and it's a long day so um yes, it is. <laughs> These stones are, you have uh, phenocyte, brookatite, azulatite, you have a piece of moldavite, you have a piece of heterite, H-E-R-E-D-R-I-T-E. -E -E. One of the, when you, if you are somebody that is in the high vibrational stones, it's expensive. 
I'm not fooling, like $100 a, a, a gram. It's very expensive, but it has the ability to like radiate you right out of your seat. It's very high. Um, it also has on here uh, tanzanite. Uh, did I say moldavite? Um, gosh. <laughs> I had to think of them all at one time. I put you on the spot. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, you did. Darn it. I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> Pop quiz. Pop quiz. It's been a day, people. It's been a yes, day. The brain doesn't everybody. always there work is, when it's been a day. There is no way for, I mean, maybe there is. Let me not say that. There are some amazing people that can remember a gazillion things, but I've been studying for years and there is no way to remember every single stone right. without happening to eventually look it up if you get into them really deep. I mean, there's just, <laughs> there's yeah. just no way to remember them all because they, you know, and you'll get somebody else's skin on it versus this person's skin on it. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to ever resonate specifically with every single resonation. But if somebody else wants to talk, I will look up every single one of those names here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> because it was a really good question. Just wait, I'm dropping links. Okay. <laughs> That's what I do usually. I drop the links. <laughs> I, I may need a, a spirit's help to uh, locate an old, I had an ankle bracelet and it was tiger's eye with um, silver little itty bitty silver bells in between each stone. And it was just, it was so neat. And uh, it, it spoke to me in volumes, but I just, I can't find it anymore. Oh, no. after, after a couple moves, I know, right? Uh, that sucks. Have you, do you work with pendulums at all? I have not. Oh, okay, um, because I, at least for me, again, mm -hmm. this is, you know, my disclaimer. Um, pendulums have been really handy for me to try to find things. They're great for lost items. Um, sometimes I'll just ask it simply, is it still around? <laughs> it, that's you know, pretty much it. <laughs> when you move a lot, things disappear. They end up in that donate box you didn't intend them to, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um, sometimes I just ask if it's even still around. Um, and if it's, it is still around, then we start having a walk about and I'm, I'm swinging the pendulum and it'll pull more one direction or the other and I start just start following it like you know playing that game of hotter hotter colder colder <laughs> right <laughs> eventually locate it um other people will also put like a map down like you could draw a floor plan mm -hmm. and and put your pendulum over it and it'll it'll hone in on a space um so yeah the pendulums are a good way to try to find last items and see for me for, for me, I believe you don't need it right now. That's why you don't have it. It doesn't stay Probably. with you. Mm -hmm. it, 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 sometimes I had a red tie, uh, not a red tigers, I'm sorry, a piece of red jasper that had tan jasper running through it. I loved that stone. I mm -hmm. thought it was the most amazing stone and it was so helping me connect my, my third, my uh, will with my, with my security chakra. And I just felt like it was the most powerful thing. Well. It disappeared in this house where I was, and I wasn't able to find it. And funny, I didn't find, I thought my grandson had actually taken it out and thrown it out in the backyard. So I looked for hours out in the backyard for it, never found it. Well, lo and behold, one day when I was moving, guess what? That stone showed up right there in the middle of my living room floor. So to me, I believe that during that time, I didn't need that stone. I already had everything that I needed for that time frame, and it will come back to you when it is time for you to need it again. Sometimes it can't come back in the same form, right? Because okay. maybe it's been paired with something else, or like if it had like two different kinds of stones or three different kinds of stones on it. Because people always worry, oh my gosh, I keep, I can't wear obsidian. If I even come near obsidian, it busts. I swear to goodness. Every single wow. time I've ever wore it, it breaks. It falls off. Obsidian does not love me. It doesn't want to resonate with me. <laughs> but I have big pieces in my house that help me kind of keep negative energies from scooting in. And I scoot them out that way. They're my wards in my house. But for me to wear them, I can't. If I wear it at nighttime, I feel like I'm choking in my sleep. So I just, uh, you know, it, it's where it's, 
if you needed it or not. And what do you need next is kind of how I see it. So what are your theories on um, stones that break? So my theory on stones that break is meant that you're supposed to share them. You're supposed, if, you, if it breaks within your, yourself, mm -hmm. it means you're supposed, to me, I believe it means you're supposed to share it with others, is that it wants you to share with someone and you have to trust your gut on who that is. Or maybe you don't, maybe you just leave it sit on your table for a little while and then your friend says, oh my gosh, I'm having such a personality issue. I can't even integrate myself. Well then guess what? That broken piece of fluoride is something that maybe they needed and I'm going to gift it to them. Mm -hmm. So to me, I believe stones will break because remember, they're made of mother nature. They're not always, they come with fractures. They come with little breaks that sometimes our human eye can't see. And they're meant to do that. They're meant to separate. They're not always going to be solid. You can't put all your energy in one stone. If you do, it's like putting all your eggs in your basket and you're praying that that basket don't break, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, it's just a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think how do you feel about well you know I, I i tend to agree with you on that i haven't really had any that have fractured um but i always read a lot where people are like oh it means that the the purpose is spent or the energy is used up and i'm like ah i don't know that the stone dies mm -hmm. you know I, you know what i mean like i don't really i didn't really follow that but that, that seems to be a popular opinion so i was like hmm, well that's interesting um and it's it and it, I'm sorry, this is just my personality coming through. So pardon, but um, like I have this beautiful piece of stone. I can't remember what it is at the moment, but it's a, it's um, in a necklace setting and it has a really pointed, very fine tip. And I had, uh, it had slid off the chain and hit the side of my dresser and chipped the tip off oh. of it. And, um, and so, you know, that, that thought of, you know, the comments I read recently of, oh, well, that means that it's, you know, its purpose is served, its energy is, is spent, and it's it's time to move on with it. And I'm like, well, in my mind, it just means that gravity's a bitch and I'm clumsy. <laughs> That's what that meant. You know? I was like, mm, I'm pretty sure it's just me and gravity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still wear yeah. the stone. We're good. <laughs> so yeah, I, you know, I don't know. And, and I, I, I like the share idea much better and I haven't had too many of them break, but um, I do like the share idea better. I, I, I always kind of wonder about the spent energy or its purpose is done um, thought pattern. I don't resonate with that so much. Yeah. yeah. Me, me, me neither. I don't really resonate with that. Cause again, you're putting boundaries on something that's yeah. energy. It, yeah. yeah. It might not resonate to your frequency anymore because you've grown above that frequency yeah. or no longer need that type of medicine because you've been mm -hmm. able to manage that mm -hmm. within yourself and, and it moves on. It comes mm -hmm. inert because it doesn't resonate with you no more. It's resonating here and you're resonating here. It's not going to get to you. Right. So, you know, yeah. I mean, that's how I see it. And like the tip, like you said, Things break. I mean, there is a human aspect to all of it. Too much woo woo can get yeah. you locked into this. I know. You know, <laughs> exactly. state hospital for There's a long not period always, of time. <laughs> exactly. There's not the always balance. a big meaning other than gravity's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's right. a lot of people That's who just want to trademark it. You know, I want to trademark yeah. it. I want to make it mine. I'm the only one that knows. That is such horse crap about you're the only one that knows oh wow and how did you become the master you know it's just like whatever right you're not willing to listen to all the aspects of everything around you what's your purpose then you know i mean you have to stay fluid and be willing in my opinion you have to be willing to accept all different realities all different points of aspects because if you limit yourself you limit your ability to catch the next frequency Right, and the next vibration or the next stone or whatever it is. So I just, I'm not limiting. I'm never going to limit my capabilities or anything because I don't know what I can accomplish. I'm a human. As soon as we stop being the student, we stop evolving. It's terrible. That's right. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that at all. Yeah, That's I actually right. have a pendulum. Um, I've, and I've got a collection of pendulums. And I, I almost always ask before, you know, like, do you want to come home with me? Do you want to work with me? We have a little conversation before I decide what I'm purchasing and see which one, you know, we have a good conversation or not. There was one I bought just because I thought it looked cool. It was just really pretty. But when I got it home, we just could not 
we weren't on the same wavelength. We couldn't communicate. The energy mm-hmm. it had was super strong, but super erratic, hard to control. You know what I mean? Mm. It was just all over the place. And we just weren't jiving. You know, it's almost like a first date where you just, the conversation is just awkward. You know, <laughs> it just, there was a lot of really awkward pauses, like things just were not happening. And, but there was a piece of me that just felt like I needed to hang on to this. I need to hang on to this. It has, it, it's, it has another purpose. Um, so don't just, you know, gift it away yet. It like I was meant to be. And we're oh, frozen. there it goes. Speaking of the erratic nature. Exactly. <laughs> Chaos. And we'll just wait for her to swing back to be <laughs> on stream. Okay. There she oh is. My God. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes, here you just fine. Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. I turned my camera off because it might be my Wi-Fi that's been weird tonight. I apologize. I, I can't tell you. I mean, we were talking about the kind of day and the moon that we're having, and it, it's 110% affecting me today, <laughs> uh, technology included. Um, so that's a whole nother sob story for another day. But um, but yeah, so this I kind of felt like I was the transport for this stone, almost like I was meant to carry it to its new destination. And that's why I picked it up. Not necessarily that I was to work with that stone, but that I was to be the, uh, I don't know, keeper, keeper isn't the word, but the protector, I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> conduit, yeah, that's a good one. So um, it turns out, you know, I've had this stone five, six, seven years. I don't know, I lost track of time. And I was working with this uh, woman on, um, doing some uh, soul retrieval and doing some trauma repair. She had some tears um, and she was really coming into her kind of spiritual awakening. And this, you know, I brought that pendulum with me. I couldn't tell you why I brought that pendulum with me because we did the work in her home. And it just, I just suddenly had this overwhelming urge. I turned around, I grabbed it out of the bag. (laughs) After I did the healing, we were talking about stones and cards and different things. And I grabbed it out of the bag and I'm like, oh my God, this stone resonated with her energy. Just, they aligned perfectly. It was like, they were the same, they were symbiotic. I mean, the, the energy of that stone, she was, she was, um, she's beautiful, kind soul, she, but she's one of those, you know, loud, boisterous females that's just sort of out there. She's constantly told to shrink herself and quiet herself. And, and I'm like, don't do that. Be you, be out there, be bold, be, you know, like it's, you know, do you, do you. Oh, the sound of silence again. It's I not know. Okay. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh. How about now? Can you hear me now? We're here. Yes, we're we hearing can hear you, you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know this is terrible. I'm so sorry, but um, go will, for Sonia. I yeah. It, I will wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can I just blame just, Comcast. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Um, Ooh. Ooh. oh, Micah, <laughs> I was you. reading a blog. We're going to non sequitur here. <laughs> and I ran across a stone that I thought was really interesting and probably appropriate to the year 2020. And this is, you probably won't remember the dates. It's just, I'm staring at your blog. Uh, you were wrote a really fascinating article about, and I'm going to mispronounce this and I apologize. Okay. Hewlandite. Hewlandite? About what? Hewlandite, uh huh, and about how it is all about karmic debts and settling those. So, you know, since we're on the subject of 2020 and it's been a bad year and there's some crazy moon energy, would this be a good stone that would help you channel stuff you can purge by the time the calendar year kicks over? And what, like, what goes into that? <laughs> absolutely, a- absolutely, that is definitely a stone that would be something that and uh, sometimes they can be yellowish or they can be greenish in color Mm -hmm. so that is definitely a stone that can kind of help you work through settling or figuring out kind of what you brought in karmically to this lifetime that Mm -hmm. may no longer fit with what you're needing to work on now because you've mastered it and be moved to the next kind of level it also really helps you work on around your heart chakra which because Typically, you'll see um, pink and green stones will resonate with this vibrational spot within your within your human body, 
And so that will help bring up and stir things around so you can work through maybe love issues, self-love issues, um, things you brought in from the past, some of your maybe current trauma issues from childhood, if you have anything like that, um, abandonment, those types of things. So yeah, it's a really, it's a really great stone. I also would say, like I was saying, aquamarine is a really great stone right now to use. It's about transformation. It's about seeing things very clearly. And it's also helps with you being able to uh, understand your voice and how to use it. Oh. Uh, another stone I've been recommending a lot has been Amazonite. Uh, although it's a lower vibrational stone, it doesn't, ee, it's, uh, uh, I like that stone because it also, that stone can be bluish greenish. So they're another one of this area, but it helps you understand. And if you're somebody that's not shy, quiet, not outgoing, maybe always gets picked on that stone will help bring the warrior out. It's, it's a warrior stone. That's why it's called the Amazonite. And you'll see hints of white in that stone too. Um, so I like that stone. Um, another stone I'm really loving, especially for people with a lot of anxiety. We got anxiety going on right now. Heavy duty. We've got worry. We've got mistrust. Uh, Lepidolite. It's a purple stone. It's super, super pretty. Uh, you can find it in a flat slab. It's purple. Ooh, or you can find them. Now, mind you, we didn't ever talk about the difference between a rough stone and a polished stone, right? I mean, like, what's the difference is yeah. if you have a rough stone mm -hmm. and a polished stone, are they, do they work the same? You know, do they work different? Does this bigger stone have more power because it's bigger? And does this little stone have more power because it's little? I think it really just depends on you. I mean, for me, a stone in the raw, I love it because of its raw beauty. It doesn't have any more power. I don't feel anything different from this stone than I would if I was feeling this little tiny stone because it's, you know, like Sonia and I both think, it's a frequency, it's a vibration. So you could have the biggest rock. If that's what you need to feel it, then get it. If you only need a little pea-sized stone this big, pocket size, then get it. Trust your gut. It, but to me, there's no difference. The vibration is the vibration. So lipidolite, really great stone. Anxiety, bipolar, people with multiple or fractured personalities, great stone to uh, add to your collection, in my opinion. Okay. I dropped those links for folks awesome. in the chat so they can go check it out. I have one stone that you would probably really like there, Jacob. This, it's really hard to see, and it's a very dark piece of what's okay. called hankasite. Hankasite Hank. is a relatively new so stone, H-A-N-K-S-I-T-E. And uh, actually, usually they're kind of yellowish, but this one I found was actually very dark, and I really, really loved the resonation of it. It helps you connect with the loved ones that have passed on. That's one thing. It also helps you with grieving. It helps you with letting go of stuff that you no longer are serving you. And, uh, it, you know, I can say in the 80s, early 80s, such, I never seen the stone ever once. But over the last, over the last four years, I've seen it lots and lots and lots. Uh, I think that's because of our current vibration. I think because it was the ending of the Aquar uh, the Pisces age and the masculine energy that had been created and it was set to help us let go of those old past wounds and tragedies and kind of move forward on them. So okay, there's a few. <laughs> I'm dropping a link. I'm dropping a link. Just wait. I might have to acquire a Hank site. Just one second. Hank's you site. selling it off your site? I might give you a conversion. <laughs> <laughs> now can we find all of these um in your shop you you cannot find all of these in my shop no okay. not currently okay. um one of the things i pride myself on is i do not mass produce mass create things um i literally go to many different shops i'll buy things online every now and then if i really feel like i trust in my gut that it's a good stone 
But to be honest, I go out to lots of different shops and I hand pick almost all of my stones on my table because I'm looking for ones that want to do the work, that want to be connected to their soul connection or their vibration or whatever. And so that's kind of like what I do. And if, again, I don't know about you, Sonia, but I mean, for me, you kind of see different stones come and go, right? Mm -hmm. Rhodochrosite, yeah. a beautiful, very thin pink stone with black spots in it. Um, now there's rhodonite and rhodochrosite. They look yeah. really yeah. much alike, but mm -hmm. their vibrations mm -hmm. are not the same, right? Rhodonite is going to help you work on your inner stuff. Rhodochrosite is going to help you work on your outer stuff with other relationships. And they are yeah. very different yeah. in texture. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, you used to be able to find rhodochrosite everywhere. You know, you barely can find a piece of it now for like ten dollars. So yeah. the amount, the price yeah. of stones nowadays is crazy outrageous compared to what it was <laughs> when I was an original collector. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. The blessing and a curse that people are starting to realize the uh, healing effects of stones. Yeah. <laughs> the well, the people, the people that want to trademark them and, you know, you can't trademark a stone unless you've made it yourself out right. of sand and whatever right. and you high fired it. But yeah. you can't trademark a stone. It's been made by Mother Nature, not by you. <laughs> Exactly. I, I will say I'm checking out rhodochrosite right now, and mm -hmm. that looks like some tasty back bacon. I'm gonna put that stuff in the frying pan. <laughs> Let me tell you, that looks that looks tasty. It looks like bacon, people. You love bacon. You like ham. You get you some rhodochrosite right now. <laughs> Please don't eat it. <laughs> well, I found I checked out Hankside. I'm just like, ooh, Do it's not try salty. This. It's salty. Yeah, just, yeah. Hank is a passive Hankside, stone there. <laughs> Hankside will actually produce like a calcium. It'll, um, so it'll get this white uh, dust around it. And it does yeah. naturally because of the environment like the condensation and stuff like that so you have to you have to be careful a lot of people will rub oil on their stones and that will kind of keep them so they don't disperse out the powdery stuff okay um so you know a lot of stones instead of be watered like if you water a mm -hmm. stone it can change its colors and bring out its highlights well oils mm -hmm. mineral oils can do the same essential oils if you want to charge them with essential oils mm -hmm. that you like like i don't know it depends on what you like oak moss or uh, I don't know, lavender <laughs> <laughs> lavender and i do not agree um, <laughs> me neither. i'm like yeah but i will say if you go to the facebook and check the the comment section i dropped the link to the rotocrosite in it there looks and you'll like bacon <laughs> it looks like bacon yes it does <laughs> mm -hmm. don't eat it people unless you want a new crown <laughs> Yeah. Just don't. <laughs> oh, no. It's gonna be a real bad. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's that awkward high school photo. Again. <laughs> you know how they always said, you know, your face will freeze like that. <laughs> yeah. And this will be on YouTube, so believe me, everyone's this gonna is see great. that. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Questions for you then, as we're moving out this craptastic year of 2020, what can some folks do using some stones and crystals to like, you know, get in sync with a good positive 2021? Um, for me, uh, mm -hmm. I have a, if you've never used crystals before and you want to begin it, I have a, what I call a prescription, a medicament that you should use. And this is just my perspective. I, I think you should always get yourself a quartz crystal, preferably double term, point on the top, point on the bottom. So the energy, when you lay it here, flows through you, right? I also highly believe that uh, uh, amethyst is a really powerful stone. It opens this third eye. It also really helps you with recovery and it helps you with dealing with addictions because those addictions is a dangerous thing that keeps our body very stuck. Uh, and so you kind of got to help that all open up, connect. You're connecting everything above, right? 
And then the other thing I like people to get is, is a very simple piece of uh, rose quartz because rose quartz helps to amplify your heart. We don't love ourselves. We don't love the things we have. We don't, we want more. We are in this whole societal age from, again, the way we used to think. And that combination opens up the chakras from your heart up. And so you need to open, in my opinion, you need to open those up first before you really can start to understand the lower parts of everything that you have going on in your tantra. Because when you get down in your tantra, it gets very confusing. Um, it can get sexual, it can get perverted, it can, it can become a power struggle within your wills and your personalities and, and all that kind of stuff. So for me, you start working up. That's the light work. That's what they want us to do. We need to learn to love and uh, move up. Now, most people are like, I hate that stuff, that love and light stuff. Well, I get it, but you got to definitely open this up to understand what's left to come through. So that's my prescription if you're going to get started. And then just trust your gut, whatever other stones you're calling you. If you don't believe you should have it, right? Write the name down, take a picture of it, go home and Google that baby up. And if you find the connection in it, then you go back to the store and you get what you need. Okay. Dr. Sonia, what would you prescribe? Dr. Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a real medical doctor. I'm just saying that do not sue uh, Mr. King Cafe. But if, you'd like to, really if you would like to file one. suit <laughs> for it, you can send that to ID, <laughs> IDGAF at gmail.com. I am a real nurse, but I'm not a real doctor. I'm, I don't want that. Registered? Okay. She, she, so she's a licensed medical practitioner. Okay. I'm a licensed medical professional, just a different yes. kind. Yes. Um, that's my disclaimer. Um, I'm a little afraid to talk because I keep freezing. So I'm thinking I should do this while I talk. Mime? So that Mimes? Freezing. Can you mime? <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the face that freezes. Um, I would say ditto with everything Mike said. Um, I think quartz is kind of the, the all encompassing and will help you um, just start to figure out vibration of stones and, and feel it and understand how it works. Um, rose quartz is definitely something we all need in our lives right now. I think we're all, all of us are struggling with self love, with um, breaking um, ancestral uh, damage and karmic debt um, and, and trying to break those cycles and learn to rise above and find a new way to step mm -hmm. out of some of that. That's part of that masculine moving into feminine energy is we're trying to step out of the expectations and the cycles that have been built before us mm -hmm. that we have stepped into and find a new path. And so uh, rose quartz can really help you um, with amethyst definitely to open your heart, open your mind and really start to connect with um, your higher self and your true being. Um, I, you know, I'm a good, the, the thing though, with working up is, you know, when you start working down, yes, now you're starting to work into your shadow work and that's a whole nother level, um, of muck that you got to go through. But I'm also a firm believer in staying grounded when you're doing all of that higher level work, um, and you're opening up, you also want to make sure that you keep your connection, um, within your body, because a lot of times, um, you know, myself included, sometimes you get woo woo and you just forget that there's, you know, a dense physical form. You still got to pay attention to, <laughs> you can't be up here all the time. Okay. Um, and so definitely some, um, ground, you're going to want some grounding type stones as well. So, you know, whether that's onyx or Apache tear or, or you, you know, some, some darker, denser stone, or even if it's just petrified wood that brings you back to earth or something that keeps you grounded while you're doing some of this work um, with your higher self to make sure you're still staying. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely would agree with that. Uh, black tourmaline right now is a really big stone, very popular, lots of it out there, easy to find. And uh, it's a little bit of a higher vibration than onyx and jet. Jet is another great stone because that's made of coal, but it's turned into a hard stone. It really kind of helps filter things back and forth too. So that's a great stone. So trivia, trivia, I actually have written about Jet. Um, you have, right on. Yes, and Jet, okay, we're going to get totally nerdy here, but let's just do it. Okay. Uh, when, it come, it, when you get phantom black dogs, barges, and other creep, creepy canine ghost spirits, you use Jet to drive it away. 
That's right. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, actually, from like older days, Jet was seen as a stone to help uh, witches protect themselves and protect their energy because, you know, they might be attacked by other darker energies. Um, and so jet is a, a very powerful stone for that kind of work too. So that yeah. resonates with exactly what you were saying, Jacob. Yeah. And it's like, if you want to really double dose it, let's get a little herbologist here, throw in some St. John's wort with it. I'll do it. See, I'm nerdy. Okay. Oh. oh no, did I crush the vibe? Let me drop a well link. Done. Well done. <laughs> no, I was just trying to think, what does St. John's work do again? <laughs> oh, no. <pr> <laughs> does that resonate with that? Relaxation, mm. right? Relaxation. And, uh, uh, let me bring up, help, I'm going to go over insomnia. to insomnia. Yeah, let me, let me go to my article on herbs that protect against evil spirits. There you go. Because I got to look up this crap. I write it down one time and pfft. Brimstone. I feel you. You're like, yeah. oh, it's in your blog. Oh, I was gonna say I could tell you what's um in uh if you wanted to know what was on this beautiful bar here. Yes. <laughs> I had it and then I moved away from it. Now okay. I have to get my mouse back over to it, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, it just said... so used to... go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I pulled up the St. John's Wart and it's the supernatural spirits can't stand ha handle the stink. <laughs> pretty nasty. If you've ever tried to take some for insomnia, that's pretty funny. Yeah. So, so we'll get we'll hit them with a wave of carbon uh, dioxide and, and some stank. And there we quick. go. Okay, Boom. back to you, Micah. Wham! Yeah. Tall, you lean. Mm -hmm. So this is on a piece of selenite, a clear piece of selenite. That's oh. its base. Okay. The stick part. And then you have uh, you have soca quartz. It's kind of like a clear quartz. It's probably this one right around in here. Okay. okay. And then you have danberite. So I don't know if anybody's worked with danberite. That is the called the shaman's tool. I use that to help repair tears and um, areas within the soul that need to be kind of stitched and pulled back together. So that's danberite. It's a DNA. Uh, conductor. There is a uh, Tibetan tekatite. That's the black stone right here. You guys might have seen tekatite. We talked about that. It's a, a, a stone that is um, more meteorite or volcanic okay. kind of stone. Tekatite helps you keep control of things. There is natural light, which is probably this one about right here. It's kind of hard to see, but it looks like a natural regular stone. It's mostly all white. You see it in your granites and that kind of stuff. It's a base stone. It helps regulate and deal with pain and suffering. Now, let's see if I can get, I got azulatite. That is going to be probably this one or this one right in here. Azulatite is a clear stone. It's very high vibrational, Ooh, really high, high vibration for that one. And on my blog, if you look at the um, raising your uh, vibration and calibrating with the 12 synergy stones, it actually tells what, what each one of the 12 stones are and, and kind of my perspective as to what, what they do. Great, thank you. Yeah, the uh, the last one, it, there's petalite. So that too okay. is another clear stone, uh, smaller kind of stone. That kind of helps push your energies around, moves things, pedals it in positions to where you want it to be. Like I said, brookatite is another one. That's this little teeny tiny stone right here. They're not really big stones. They're very small, brookatite is. So you'll find those sometimes on other bigger crystals. Uh, like I talked about heterite, that's of the very high, high vibrational stone, very expensive. But I'm telling you, if you want to blast to blast to the cosmic realms, that's a good way to go. It's got scolocyte. Scolocyte can be found either in a wild or in a clear long bar, that is a very important piece to kind of help you with um, 
resonating. It helps you level yourself out. It kind of creates a balance, the scolocyte does. And then you got uh, phenocyte. I talked about that one. Tanzanite is that beautiful purple one. Tanzanite used to be around. We used to have lots of tanzanite back in the day, and then it's kind of making a comeback. Again, another one of these third eye stones to kind of help fine tune it. A little higher vibrational than, in my opinion, than your amethyst. And then uh, last but not least, the green moldavite. You know, everybody knows about moldavite. You can find moldavite in oils and stuff like that. But you really got to be careful nowadays because people make this. It's a, it's a resin that a tree puts out. And uh, you have to be careful because people will, you know, they make fake moldavite. Looks real. Looks like everything else. But it's not. It's plastic or it's been man-made. And they sell it like it's real. <laughs> so you got to be careful. Turquoise, you might find turquoise, but it'll say it's actually dyed howlite in the back of it. That dyed howlite is a white stone with black things running through it, and then they'll dye that stone. You'll find a lot of dyed agates, too. They're agates with the bands around them, but they've been dyed. Man, man's dyed them to, you know, you know, make them look more pretty and more, you know, something to purchase kind of thing. So you have to be careful of those. Can't always trust them all the time. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. So I take this, what I do with this, when you come to do healing work with me, I have you put it somewhere on your body, wherever you feel like it should lay, right? And you put it on. And then what I do is I um, will put you, I use my energy to pull your energy in and I connect your energy with me. And then what I do is I will put on headphones on your head and then I wait and I kind of get your energy, the taste in my mouth, the feel of it. And then what I will do is I will put on a Siglio frequency that I feel your body really needs. Depending on how you've answered my questions when I first get you started, I put those on your head and you listen to that. And as you go into your own deep trance or meditation, that's when I can start to see the things around your energy and around your aura. And I can feel if they should stay or if they should go. And then I kind of move them out with my hand energy and extract them or leave them in place or maybe move them around or that kind of stuff. If you have tears or holes or, or fractures or more than one thing sitting in the same spot, I can feel that when I move it through your when I move it through your energy. So during that time, you're kind of going yourself into your own little sleep pattern, I guess to say, while all that comes out. And then I, I use that to take it all away. So that's what I do when I do the calibrating and vibrational um, energy work. Nice. So I use those stones for all that kind of stuff. I use magnets um, to put on your feet and hands to help ground you in your body while you're getting treated. Um, so it just depends on what you got going on. Sonia, do you use them with your with the horses and the uh, people you help? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh we heard Can you her. hear me? Yes, <laughs> I'm here. Sorry. I had my camera off because I keep freezing. Now you're blank. blank. Yeah, now you're blank. You don't even have your little uh, thumbnail. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. You're coming back. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, okay. I can go on about the day I'm having today, and most of it revolves around technology, but we're just not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Short answer for you before I freeze again. Yes, I use crystals <laughs> yeah, with my healing work in a very similar way. Um, and again, I kind of pick and choose what's going to help bring things back into resonance um, for that individual. But I also use it with my horses um, as well. And um, combining equine therapy and um, energy healing is phenomenal. Um, and I'm... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Oh, she's back. Am I back? We got, yeah, we got you with the oh, finger in the broke. nose, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. It's It sums up 2020 for me, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> my camera continuing to freeze. Oh, but, my goodness. Yeah. 2020 and stones. It's like Indiana yeah. Jones running from that big, huge stone rolling at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right after he stole that little head thing from exactly. the, what is it, Amazonian, uh, I don't know where he was when he did that, but. I don't yeah. either, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much. Uh, <laughs> he dodged the arrows and then the big boulder came after him mm -hmm. and then he got yeah. on the plane with the snake. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that's, uh, that's also something that uh, Micah kind of does. What's but that? The snake work. Snake work. I like, I worship Naga. That's okay. your Tantra. Your Tantric part of yourself, your Dantan, and that kind of energy that is what I call Naga energy. Also, people can see it as um, maybe genie energy or gin type of energy. So it really just depends on how deep you get. And also, you know, how, what, which you see it in more of a shamanic aspect, or do you see it more in a, a chaotic type of um, aspect. So also Egyptians, Egyptians have been known to, you know, use Tantra and, you know, have snake energy. So it can be darker for some people. I like it because it's trans, I like it because you transform. It's a transformative energy. It moves things, it shifts. It's, it's not predictable sometimes. Nice, very nice. So I know we've been, we, usually we would have kicked off with this, but everyone's been having hellacious day. <laughs> so, I, I, so if we want to do a round uh, table about your, your day, because I had a very interesting happen that, that uh, is totally me, but still it, it was interesting. But let, let's just go round table. Let's start, Micah. You were talking about your hellacious day. Oh, just that my, uh, I, I had a personal stuff go on late, late, late into the night. Mm. And so I didn't get a whole lot of sleep. And then um, I'm kind of carrying a couple of jobs at the same time in my real life work, yeah. you know, pay, pay the money yeah. work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it was just a lot of deadlines. It's the end of the year. It's the mm. end of the quarter. It's the end of things to close off. So there's a lot of irons in the fire that you got to make sure all get done at a certain time and so I was just feeling like I was under the thumb of the taskmaster ah. uh, and there's just no way to get out from underneath it when you got to get the work done as a little human so yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it was Absolutely. just a lot of scurrying and I really had a lot of heavy duty anxiety over the last couple of months the anxiety the weight um, the more souls that seem to die the less I sleep um, and I do a lot of nighttime dream work and a lot of that kind of stuff. And so for me, it, when I don't sleep, when the human body doesn't sleep enough, then it can be draining on the spirit. So, yeah. so more of, more of just that kind of thing. And you can, you can add the rocks and all my gems that I can. And usually I put in on power talismans to kind of power mm -hmm. me through the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Sonia. Can you guys hear me with my little picture on or do I need to? We hear you I... just fine. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I think I'll leave my little photo. Okay. <laughs> it's been safer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you hadn't noticed, I've been having some technology challenges today. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's been kind of a theme for me. Uh, no, you know, it's um, it, the year has been a rough one. It's been a rough one at work. It's been very transformative for mm -hmm. me um, at home. And it's, oh, gosh, today in general, just sort of, it all kind of seemed to come together. Um, and definitely some personal stuff that that's going on. And I've got, you know, there are some people at work that just kind of I don't know, probably should go back on their meds and, you know, just, just a little bit of everything <laughs> kind of all at once. So, um, having this time with you all is, uh, it's a nice distraction. It's good. And it's healing for me. So I appreciate it. Even with all the technical 
difficulties <laughs> I seem to be having lately. I literally would start to write an email and I'd lose my connection and I'd sit and watch the wheel of death and then it would pop back and I'd write the next sentence before the wheel of death and then I'd write the next sentence and it's, you know you're like it's so terrible you have to just laugh at it you can't even get frustrated because mm -hmm. it's like this is just a joke it's got to be a joke <laughs> so you know it's just that's kind of been my day to day so all of my glitches now don't surprise me whatsoever because I've been you know, having all kinds of really interesting things happen. So <laughs> you are battle tested the Wi-Fi. I, I am. Uh, I'm trying to fight the good fight. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> well, Wendy, you've got to be having a great day because we saw that puppy dog stick his little nosy in here and there. Where'd he go? Yes, that's your uh, your black bar bargeist and and things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The day has ended well. It's just been very low energy. Um, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, the upstairs people are having a knockdown, drag out screaming oh. match. And, oh. you know, and then and, and my eyes pop open and I'm awake for the next several hours. And mm. I guess everybody's had to, having emotions. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I had taken my car in and uh, a, a, a very good friend was taking care of some problems and there were more problems he found and he couldn't take care of some problems and so the you know mechanical wise mm -hmm. it's been a rough day and um just once again it's just the energy but yes i did end up at one of my favorite clients house and um and viper is around here somewhere and he is an absolute love machine so <laughs> <laughs> and mm -hmm. and his his mama makes me feel so I, just just good about what I do. Oh. Yeah, you know, she's awesome. she's completely confident in leaving her 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 fur kid with me. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. And mine is a fur, I've got a fur kid story too, but it's okay. not my fur kid. Oh. Um, so this morning, you know, there's coffee. There's mm -hmm. me taking care of the the my fur kids. I've got three fur kids, pit bulls. Mm -hmm rescue pit bulls and then i get a knock on the window it's my other half who's like there's a really big freaking dog running up and down the prairie <laughs> so okay. it has turns out it's an akita wolf hybrid wow oh. so she was big and scary and it looked like she had just had a tussle because her nosy was all torn up oh, oh. So I'm just standing there. I'm like looking at this huge dog that I don't know. And you can imagine. So if you can imagine Akita head in brindle yeah. wolf body. So that kind <laughs> of, but the tail goes long and then has a little curl, like a little mm -hmm. curly cue at the end, but the head is all Akita, but those really long legs and that arched uh -huh. back. And she's just going back and forth, like between our property, between my neighbor and myself, our property line. And they've got like this little teacup, something yapping away at it. I'm like, okay, that's breakfast. Yeah. And she yeah. just stopped yeah. and, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's get the milk bones and see if we can lure it in. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I've got a fully fenced yard. So I open up the gate and it took her a little while to warm up, but she uh, took the milk bones and we lured her in. Actually, she just walked in. When we opened right. it, she came up and up and she's like, oh, you're giving me treats. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I'm just like, oh my God, your head is bigger than mine. You're going to crush my head like a watermelon. <laughs> and, you know, because she's just looking at you with like that stare. Yeah. And so she comes in and we're given the treats and, you know, she just starts sniffing around the entire property line. So I've got about an acre that's fenced. So there's like, you don't have to be close to the dock. Okay. <laughs> And of course, my dogs are freaking out. Sure. Um, and so we get her into, we have like this little pee pee cock a pen thing we do and we got her in there and everything and everything worked out. Oh, it took us like half an hour to get through to animal control services because like she had a collar on, but there was no tags or oh. anything like that. But we didn't want to get close enough to look, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. Anyway, so we fed her, we put out the food. She didn't want the kibble. She liked the canned food. 
spoiled. Already spoiled. I know. And we're just like, okay, uh, uh, like if she's got a preference hamburger. for canned food. Yeah. If she's got a, you know, and she doesn't want to eat Daisy, who looks like a little Vietnamese pot belly pig, then I'm not too worried about this dog. Anyway, so we just put a crate up by uh, like our garage. She walked in, it started to rain. It's Washington State. Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, and we finally got through to animal control services who said it would be three to five days before they could get out there. So just leave her penned up. And I'm just like, I'm not going to leave the baby dog penned up. I don't care if she's bigger than me. Yeah. Lo and behold, we search, we go to the lost and found for the town I live in Washington. First picture, people taking pictures of this dog. And so oh. we contacted the owners. They were there in like 10 minutes. They looked oh, like a mile oh, away. Oh, yay. Good. And grabbed her. And as soon as they walk, you know, drove in, the you know, dog's tail starts wagging and she's jumping up and down. And so that was my, you know. She just went on walkabout. Oh. Yep. And this all happened. It all took about an hour. <laughs> mm. So that was my morning. That's a much oh. better morning. Yes. Yeah. I was worried though, because like wolf, wolf dog hybrids are illegal. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if they take her, they're going to put her down or something like this. So it was like, well, they I have wasn't to prove what percentage she is to begin with. But um, yeah, so she was like a 120 pound dog with, <laughs> so, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she was real big. I mean, you've seen, uh -huh. Mike, seen Wendy, you've seen pictures of Mikey, who's my 85 pound pit bull. And right. she's like twice his size. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Crazy. Get, so, you know, I've got Augie, who's 120, or what used to be 120 pounds, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. he's a little lighter weight now, but, yeah, and yeah, you know, his head is two of my hands, which are just normal sized hands. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. I guess I just don't, I'm teasing you about the fear and not letting the dog come, to, not, not wanting the dog to come near you. <laughs> well, the thing is like, because you want to but it's mm -hmm. a really big dog and even one little nip can be bad, you know? Right, yeah. right. And you don't know how long the dog had been running around and she obviously mm -hmm. got into a tussle. Mm -hmm. And she looks mm -hmm. hungry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, the, the girl did not turn Ooh, down a cookie. Yeah. The girl right. did not turn down a cookie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so that oh. sounds fun. Yeah, so I did want to give her major snuggles and everything. And I will say she did leave a little gift <laughs> in the pen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little, a little, one. a little. It was about rabbit size. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so guys, the teacup yapper. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was thinking like, and, uh, don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> I like all dogs, by the way, but I love them more than that. <laughs> but um, guys, it's yes. about that time. Oh. Mm. So Micah, if mm -hmm. someone would like to get contact with you and your services, what's the best way to get a hold of you? You can, um, best way to get a hold of me is on Facebook Messenger uh, okay. through Silver Moon Medicine. Okay. That's my um, page on uh, Facebook. So okay. that's the best way to get a hold of me if you want to kind of keep up with what I'm doing and where I'm going and where to find me at, whether I'm vending or reading or doing healing work. It just depends on what my mood is. I'm a double Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of us in here, you know. So um, not your the typical voices. two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop way. counting at 10, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the best way to reach me and find out kind of where I'm going. I do have silvermoonmedicine.com. That is my mm -hmm. online store where you can purchase some of my wares. Uh, I have a lot of oils, spells, uh, conjures, uh, hoodoo type things uh, on that website. So feel free to, to, you know, go there. Come see me in person if you're in Washington State. And uh, a little bit about Whispering Shadows. Some of you know uh, Roman Delgado. Uh, mm -hmm. He is a shamanic healer here in Washington. And him and I, um, you know, we've had dreams together at the same time. And they're very amazing. We'll talk about those some other time. But uh, Whispering Shadows came to, me in a, came to me in a dream and I hit him up and said, hey, you were the badger in this dream and we yeah. need to talk yeah. about what the whispers are about. And so him and I formulated a, uh, a group. We, we do uh, readings and healing and we 
we're not mamsy pamsy. We're ones that are going to kind of give it to you straight, whether you want it or not. There's not going to be a lot of love and light in this kind of. Uh, <laughs> you're going to figure out what you want to do with your shadow and how you want to control it or let it go. And that's kind of, that is the vibration of that. We're both dark workers. We're not light workers. And so um, that's the vibration of our little shadow, uh, whispering shadows, uh, healing work that we do. So, but we always are looking for other readers that want to do that. Currently right now, you know, we're not able to read because of COVID too often. You can't do our big little mini fairs mm -hmm. like we used to. Um, so, you know, because of that, but what I am going to be doing is I'm going to start doing some Zoom classes, which I've had a huge outcry for, um, you know, Zoom classes on hoodoo uh, and basic hoodoo, uh, on dark workers, on um, shadow work, all those kind of topics. Roman and I have taught many, many times together. And so I think we, our energies complement each other very well. Uh, I'm the, I'm more of the woo woo, new ager, darker spectrum. And he's more of that really earthbound kind of shadow worker. And, and so his and I's together make out a pretty dynamic. We can just not touch all the different frequencies in a class. And that is what I think is really amazing. So that's cool. if you're on my Facebook uh, for Silver Moon Medicine, you'll find that. There is a okay. Whispering Shadows page if you're interested in just kind of following us on there and, uh, you know, always chipping in, looking for people, wanting to know what you want to know and how can we get you what you need. Okay, Asus, I'm going to drop a link for that as well, Whispering Shadows. For awesome. you. And so hit us up though, when you're getting ready to launch the classes, everything, because we'd love to have you back on to talk about that for everyone. Oh, oh we, yeah. We're, we're kind of formulating a, a series anyway. So, oh, okay. And yeah. And like, if you need help with it, with doing your classes, just say, just say the word and I'll do what I can. I, Jake will too, probably. Nice. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not volunteering you, Jake. I'm just saying. <laughs> you help. You, you're, you're I know, sure. I know oh, how to whip up. What do we need? No, I was exactly. going to say, I know yeah. how to whip, I know how to whip up some websites and like, right. I'm really good at Pinterest. Go figure. Oh, uh, there you go. Right on. <laughs> I'm not good at Pinterest. I've not, not gotten either. into that. Yeah. It took me a little I, I, bit to get it into it. Oh yeah. yeah. Let, let, I got to tell you, like for my website, Ghostly, Pinterest does more for my traffic than Facebook and YouTube has ever done. Wow. Really? Good to know. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. wild. Pinterest yeah. is crazy that way. Yeah. Sonia <laughs> though. Yeah. If someone wants to get a hold of you. Yeah. So my, um, my business page, uh, is resonance healing. Um, and I am on Facebook as well as Instagram and not yet on Pinterest, but need to get there as well as some other platforms, but I'm a bit of a Luddite. So I'm a slow mover. So <laughs> I, am, I am not the Jacob Rice of the world. I, don't do I do move I don't on the digital website. like that. I know. I don't even the Energizer Bunny on crack. Because mm -hmm. I'm too freaked out about signing up for whatever those GoDaddy.com crap is or whatever. Uh, I don't know no, what I'm doing. Like, you, you know what? You just you you talk to Ghost I Daddy. Know, like I'll give you the I'll give you the Ghost Daddy. Ghost Daddy. <laughs> that takes us to a whole nother realm. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's a different show. That's the after dark show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Paywall people, paywall for that MC seventeen. Family show. You catch me on OnlyFans. I'm joking. You are not. Am I though? <laughs> um, I you can find my Facebook page Resonance Healing um pretty easily, and uh, that's where I do all of my you know I do posts. I do also do some online classes. I think uh, Wendy was a part of my last one where I did an empath class. Mm -hmm. um online and it seemed to go pretty well and it was very um, good thank you yeah it uh-oh uh-oh uh -oh. <laughs> Sonia I'm gonna get you a gargoyle um I, I quite often <laughs> uh it, they they protect the uh the waves the airwaves and and yes. wi-fi signals. perfect <laughs> good I need one Oh my okay. gosh, it's All ridiculous. Right. It's out of control. <laughs> I swear. Oh my goodness. But yeah, so until I glitch again, I guess I'll just keep talking. But <laughs> uh, 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. I knew it. I knew it wouldn't take long. We we're, were just waiting for me to start talking again to just glitch out, I think. Is uh-huh. what's going on. This, <laughs> this, 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 is, this is the karmic uh, Wi-Fi demon monkeys just oh, man. going bonkers around your router. It is. It's driving me nuts. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some cleansing work on my router. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Unplug it, give it 30 seconds, yeah. you'll be good. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, just yeah. do smudge it, smudge the hell out. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. I'm going to have to. <laughs> Holy cow. That's too funny. <laughs> oh, but anyway, um, I'll try to be short then. I'm also starting to expand on my equine healing practice. So that'll be coming up. That's going to be pretty awesome and pretty phenomenal. So okay. I'll stop before my computer cuts me off again. <laughs> <laughs> so Wendy, any parting words for the last Mystic Moon Cafe of the Dread 2020? Woo! Not particularly. Um, everybody <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm, I'm out. Um, <laughs> I don't even have a show for next week. Um, we can talk about comic books. We... <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> um, I, I hope everybody makes it through. I, I, it is a, is a very dark time and the anxiety levels and just like your, the stresses and everything of everyday life are just extremely heavy right now um keep going keep smiling keep opening the door for a stranger while staying maintained you know six feet back but uh <laughs> uh yeah hey there's one <laughs> figured out um but and we'll be here we're here you need to talk mm-hmm. we'll, we'll talk to you we'll get on here we'll laugh and and joke and bring you informational shows and guests and everything else and by golly i i want to keep going so by hook or by crook through that Mm -hmm. so with that guys it's that time of the evening and it's that time of the year but we didn't hear from you much oh unless this is it yeah well i mean like i i mean i saved a dog (laughs) Um, (laughs) but yes people uh you know you know it's crappy when marianne from um gilligan's Island Island passes away so be safe folks Mm -hmm. it's still you know wear your mask wear your damn mask keep Mm -hmm. be safe and everything i if you guys didn't know i know eight people have died and 14 that have been hospitalized so this thing is very real to me mind you this is scattered all across the country from my friends in new york to my old hometown of chicago to friends in la and co-workers i actually had co-workers who passed away from it so people that i worked with so uh be safe and i will say good riddance to 2020 yeah good riddance riddance to 2020 2021 you're only looking up and with that i'll say bid everyone adieu and happy new year Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Bye.